Some of us might consider the apostles so great because of how much work they did for Christ. You know, they went around the world, um, to a great part of the world, you know, preaching and not only preaching, but healing and, and casting out demons and, and even raising the dead. And, and so we look at those power as like, man, God was with them. And yes, God was with them. And so we, and so in, in, in our, in, in our time, we tend to, well, some people actually, let me say some, some people tend to look up to people who are, you know, going around the world, missionizing for Christ and, and healing, um, the sick and casting out demons and you know we, we say oh these people are doing such a great work for Christ right and and that may be true right um but 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 we but there's another side to the story that sometimes we 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 tend to overlook right another side to the to the to the ministry that we tend to overlook which is equally if not even greater than than what we what we consider to be the greatest and so just a couple of days ago i was looking at um at acts acts chapter five and it started out talking about how there was a couple who sold a piece of land and you know you know they they just lied about it but we're not going to talk about that because that's a famous story but um, we see coming on to the end of Acts chapter 5 where um, the Peter, and, right? And I guess, I think other apostles as well, right? But, but um, Peter, they, um, you know, they, they had a council against, against the, the disciples and they were like, we're going to warn you guys to stop preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus, right? You guys need to just cut it out. And so in, in Acts chapter 5 and verse um, verse 40, right, it says, um, so this is what happened when, when, they, when they caught them, right? They commanded them and says, to him they agreed, and when they called the apostles, and so there's one man who was saying, listen, let's just like not quick to, to judge these guys. If God is not with them, they'll just kind of basically just fade away, you know, they'll just go away at some point, right? So, so they agreed with him, and so they, they, they called the apostles, and Peter was one of them. So they called the apostles and beat them, right? Just to kind of discourage them a little bit, something for them to remember, right? And beat them, and commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now, here's the sticking point. And verse 41 says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing hmm, that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame to suffer shame for his name and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach jesus christ and so when they got when they were beaten um which was supposed to be a form of discouragement um public shame right um they they were they left rejoicing that they were worthy to suffer shame for Jesus. And that even caused them to be encouraged because they went on to continue preaching and teaching everywhere they went. You know, sometimes we focus on on the fact that what 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 are we doing for Christ? You know what I mean? We look at the people who are going all over the world or the people who are on the internet or the people who are doing this. But in our circumstances, Christ, in our circumstances as well, Christ is calling us to do a great work for him as well. And some, some of us, that work might just be to suffer shame for him. And, and it's not because he's placed that position, um, he's placed that, that thought in, the, in, the, in, in, in people's mind to abuse us and to say stuff. But he allows it to bring out the best in us. And so sometimes um, people might say, oh, you're taking this Christian thing too serious. You, you know what I mean? You need to dress, I mean, more attractive. You, you need to do this and to do that. You know what I mean? Um, all these things 
is 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 a part of suffering for Christ. And these things are character building. Um, in the book of Romans, it says, it says, tribulation worketh patience. And so, God might not be using some of us to go into a far place in Africa or to go into the Middle East, you know, but he's using us where we're at right now. He wants to use us even in the small things. He wants us to rejoice even in the small things. It could be just somebody could say, why are you always wearing this? Why can't you wear that? And you look so much better. Like you're taking this Christian thing so serious. And if we could just like smile in our heart and be content, then heaven rejoice. That is bringing glory to God that we're not we're not we're we're not tossed away we're not we, we haven't wavered in making jesus happy and so if at this moment in time that you're you're feeling discouraged you're feeling like no one understands you're feeling like you know my christian walk and my christian journey is a journey that you know i i am alone you know nobody it's getting to it's, it's getting the point that 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 I have to do this for the kingdom of God. You know, nobody's getting to the point where I can't go through with this backdoor deal. Um, um, you know, to 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 get my driver's license, to get a house, to get a this, to get a that. You know, I can't do the things what the world does to get ahead because I I belong to God, and people might say, "But you're stupid!" Like. Where in the Bible do you see that you can't do that? And, and you know that I need to be truthful, right? And so when, when people criticize us, when people criticize us in that manner and try, try to make us um, feel ashamed because of our conviction for Christ, when we stick to him, when we rejoice in that tribulation, we make Jesus happy. We make him proud. We make the heaven and all the angels proud that we can stand up for our Lord the same way he stood up for us on that cross and suffered the ultimate shame on that cross. After all, he's, he's calling us to a higher level. He's calling us to be, to be baptized with his baptism. And you drink of the cup that he drank of. And he's promised that when we do that, he will raise us up again. And we'll raise up in a more glorified manner. And that raising up I'm talking about is not in the last days when Jesus comes. I'm talking about that 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 we are living in sin and 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 death has dominion. Right? So when Christ raises up us out of the life of Adam because he is our new Adam right so when Christ raises up raises us up from that state where where the old Adam was we are raised into life eternal and so let us be steadfast let us be firm let us rejoice in the fact that we are counted that we can be worthy to be to be put a shame for Christ because he has overcome and he has given us all authority to overcome through him and as Paul said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me he's seeking to strengthen all of us if we should just allow him to do that and one day, one day, this work is going to be finished. And this is this work is going to be finished by him. But he's going to use us as his instruments. And he's calling all of us right now to use us as his instruments. And he's preparing us to use us as his instruments. And so, if there's ever a time to be steadfast it is no if there's ever a time to continue to the to to be to be resolute to continue to the end it's no because we're at the finishing line 
and all the criticism and all the shaming and 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 all the misunderstanding is nothing comparing to the plan that God have for all of us. So until next time, take care.